Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Happy holidays everyone. In honor of the holiday season, we're counting down the 12 days of Boa Mess. Today brings us to just over the halfway point at day seven of Boa Mess, and we have a spectacular locality boa to celebrate day seven. And that is the Peruvian red tail boa, like this one. And so Peruvian red tail boas have a cult-like following there's often a lot of discussion about what the best true red tail boa is, but among a lot of the red tail aficionados, the Peruvian true red tail is second to none. And you know, as far as my personal opinion, I love them all, as you know, um, and I'd be really hard pressed to decide between the Peruvian and the Suriname, they're both so great, but you just can't beat these Peruvian red tails. So one of the defining characteristics of these animals is they usually have a yellowish or tannish color. The tails are not quite as long or red as the Suriname, but they're still you know, beautiful red tails. They contrast nicely with their golden colors. They will typically have thin saddles, typically not peaked saddles, just very thin saddles sometimes. People uh, like the really, really thin saddles and some people have selectively bred them to have pretty much very thin or even absent saddles. Um, sometimes they do have a little bit of peaking and I have some peaking in some of my animals. So this is actually a female that was born here in 2015. So she's about six and a half years old. Um, this female is probably pretty much adult size. She might get a little bit bigger than this. I'd say she's about six feet long. The Peruvians are said to be the largest of the locality boas occasionally reaching up to 13 feet. Though any animal over 10 feet would be very rare. Um, I, you know, typical large adult is probably eight to nine feet. So they're not giants, but they are pretty good size snakes. And because of the musculature that's uh, typical of the two red tails, they can be somewhat of a challenge to handle, you know, for a smaller person. So you might want to think twice about handling this alone if you're a smaller person. As far as the temperament of these Peruvian red tails, although they're not overly aggressive, they have their typical red tail temperament. So they're a little bit more high strong than say your common, you know, boa imperator or most morph boas. And as I've said many times before, true red tails are really for the more experienced keepers. So I wouldn't recommend them uh, for a first time keeper. Um, but in general, they don't present any, you know, real challenges other than they are very muscular animals and they can get a little larger than you know most types of boas. It's said that there's two different distinct localities of Peruvian red tails, and these are the boas that hail from the uh, vicinity of the cities of Pacalpa, Peru, and Iquitos, Peru. However, I, as I've commented in some of my previous videos, I'm somewhat skeptical that there's any real legitimate, legitimate difference between these two forms. And there's also some complicating factors, such as the fact that very few boas actually come from Pacalpa or from Iquitos. They're, they're collected and brought in from the rainforest, you know, for many, many miles around and just simply exported out of those cities. Uh, that being said, this is a female that's descended from animals described as Pacalpa. And I think she kind of shows the, uh, and some of the nice characteristics associated with that uh, locality. So typically they have reduced saddles. They often have these geometric or jungle-like saddles. And you can see in this animal, she's kind of got that look. Um, the Akitos form, I'll show you one of my Akitos animals in a minute. But overall, the distinction is really not all that great. And I've seen within a single litter of Peruvian red tails, you can have animals that both have the Pacalpa and the Iquitos look. So again, I'm not quite sure that I you know, believe that this is a legitimate difference. However, I do maintain two separate breeding groups, my Pacalpa animals and my Iquitos animals. This is one of my Iquitos Peru true red tail boas. And I think this female really nicely illustrates the characteristics that are supposedly representative of the Iquitos locality. So you'll notice she's got these kind of a little bit more blocky saddles than the Pacalpa. And she has this really inky black look, like the saddles just look like ink, like they're painted on with ink. So she shows the nice, rich, golden, yellowish tan color. And you can see a very faint lateral stripe that's kind of this orangish color. In some animals, it's actually more pronounced. 
Then the Akito's form is said to have a longer, slightly redder tail, although it's still not quite as long or red uh, as a Suriname boa. And so this is a five and a half year old young adult female that I got. Uh, this is a farm bred animal from a farm down in Iquitos, Peru. It's not clear to me where the animals that you know are being farmed on this farm were actually collected from, which is you know one of the issues I have with the whole Iquitos versus Pacalpa uh, distinction. They could have been collected from you know many miles away in Peru in the Peruvian Amazon, and you know, they're just being farmed there. That being said, I do think that this animal really nicely illustrates what most people consider a Pacalpa, or I'm sorry, an Iquitos Peru red tail. And so I have a small breeding group of these animals. Actually, I'm breeding this female right now to one of my Iquitos males, uh, also a farm bred animal. So fingers crossed that we'll have some babies in the summer of 2022. And so a little bit about the breeding. I found that the Peruvian red tails are a little more challenging to breed than the Surinams. I mean, my Surinams, uh, pretty much always when I pair them up, I get a nice litter. With the Peruvians, I've had several times where it just didn't uh, take for whatever reason. Other people tell me they have the opposite. They find the Peruvians easier to breed. So I don't know exactly. Maybe I just have animals that just, for whatever reason, those specific animals haven't bred as well as my specific Surinams. Um, that being said, Peruvians are a little bit more hard to find and they do command higher prices than the Surinams. So I wonder if there is some truth that they're a little bit harder to breed. Uh, they are, as I said, somewhat expensive and a little bit hard to find, but there are quite a few breeders of them. So you shouldn't have a problem finding an animal if you are looking to get into this type of red tail boa. You might just uh, might be a little surprised uh, at the price and experience some sticker shock. But they are beautiful, beautiful animals and really the epitome of the true red tail. Definitely one of my favorites. So, you know, I think they're well worth the high prices that they're commanding right now. One more snake for today's video. Just wanted to show you a holdback female that was born here in 2020. This is a Pacalpa animal, a cross between a Rio Bravo bloodline male and a uh, Jim Peters bloodline female. And actually I have that same cross going on right now. So fingers crossed we'll have some more babies sometime this summer. But just a beautiful, beautiful female. She's starting to develop her yellow color. They typically will start out gray and then they develop the yellow as they get older. And I just love the shape of the saddles on this female and the contrast. You can see how that white dash in the middle of the saddles really stands out. And you can see the, the you know, muscles of this animal. She's even at, you know, a year and a half old, she's already starting to look really square and muscular as they should. As you notice, I'm hold, kind of holding her at arm's length. She's still a little nippy. And typically when I open up her tub, uh, she will definitely strike out at me. Uh, the Peruvians in general are, can be a little bit nippy. They don't really settle down quite as much as some of the others. Although it's individual variation and I have some Peruvians that are really mellow and they, you know, they never strike at all. And then of course in general the adults tend to be more mellow than the babies which makes sense because the babies need to survive you know, to reach breeding age. So that was a look at my Peruvian red tails for day seven of BOMS. I hope this was helpful and somewhat entertaining. As always, shoot me any questions you have. Thanks for watching and Merry BOMS.